In this episode we'll learn the basics on how to use a lathe and we'll create a cup for a gas tank from stock aluminum. Hi folks, I'm Custom Chess for Roma Custom Bike and I'm back for another episode where we'll explore how does a small home lathe work. And then we'll make our first part with it, a crown style cup for a gas tank. But before starting, let me remind you that we have new shades courtesy of Wiley X. These glasses are the same eyewear worn by the US Marines and they're bulletproof. As a matter of fact, my buddy Neil has just sent me one of the lenses that they use for ballistic testing. This has been shot with a shotgun from a distance of 10 meters. <laughs> Can you imagine? If they're good for bullets, they're definitely good enough to protect our eyes while riding or even in the shop. Now, recently I bought this small lathe. It's no Chinese toy. This was actually made in Eastern Germany in the late 80s when the wall was still up. I figured it would be a good candidate for our purpose and most of what you'll see can be applied to most home shop size machines. In order to use a lathe, we need to understand what it is and what are its basic parts. Wikipedia states, a lathe is a tool that rotates the workpiece on its axis to perform various cutting operations. So to create an object with symmetry about an axis of rotation. So, according to the definition, the first area we should get familiar with is the tool post. It's the place where we mount the cutting tools that we'll be using to shape the object. In order to move the tool post along the X and Y axis, it needs to be mounted on two slides, the cross slide and the top slide. Both are operated by hand wheels. The top slide is able to rotate around the vertical axis, allowing the operator to move the cutting tool diagonally in relation to the axis of rotation of the piece. The cross slides are planted onto the carriage, the main slide that moves parallel to the object for the entire length of the workable area. This happens by rotating the main hand wheel, which is attached to the lead screw. Next, we have the motor, the heart of the lathe. It's powered by two switches in the front panel, allowing the operator to power it on and reverse the direction of rotation. On the left side, we find the gears. They connect the rotary motion of the motor to the self-centering chuck the device that allows us to clamp the workpiece onto the lathe. For automated operations such as cutting threads, we can activate the feed handle. This connects the motor to the lead screw, automatically moving the carriage and the cutting tool along the workpiece. The direct relation between the piece rotation and the cutter motion allows us to create accurate threads or more simply, to work the piece evenly. To modify the pitch of the thread between metric and imperial, for example, all we need to do is check the gear table posted on the front of our machine. Each pulley has a different number of teeth and by setting them up as specified on the table, you can obtain a predetermined carriage speed to achieve a specific thread pitch. Last but not least, we have the tailstock assembly. Here we can mount an additional chuck for drilling operation or a dead center, a stabilizing device used to minimize chatter on longer work pieces. Let me just take a second to thank you all for the support you demonstrate every day by hitting the like button, by sharing our videos on your social networks, and by subscribing to our channel. Now you can click on the little bell to receive a notification when I publish a new video so you can see them as soon as they're out.
I also would like to invite you to visit our site. It's called www.romacustombike.com where you can find our unique accessories and our t-shirts because nothing is better than posting in the real world. Great, now that we have somewhat of a superficial understanding of our tool, we can start figuring out how we're going to achieve our goal of making a crown-shaped gas cap. I should warn you though, the lathe can be a ridiculously dangerous tool, so take your precautions before attempting to use one. Now, I decided to make my life a little easier and start off with an already made gas cap that will serve as a base for our project. Maybe one day I'll be able to make the entire thing from scratch, but for now we'll be using this flash type cup I bought on eBay for 10 bucks or so. All we need is the base part, so we begin by removing the spring activated handle. It should be a pretty simple task, but then the measly 10 bucks tag price reveals the true value of the materials used to construct this item, and we're forced to use a bit of brute force to take it apart. It should be noted that while Polsky's hands fear no sparks, you should be using gloves to do this type of jobs. And remember, Polsky Rage is a Viking, and Vikings fear no pain. <laughs> Once the pin was removed, the handle came out easy, and we're left with our precious threaded base that we'll use to support the crown. This piece is not quite ready though, it needs a bit of cleanup. I want to remove the extra material in the inside that we no longer need, and to do so, we mount it on the lathe chuck. Using a simple brace cutting tool, which we discover at a later time it's about the cheapest sheet you can find, we begin removing material. As you can see, we had to change the mounting position of the cutting tool to reach the piece without ruining the portion that we want to keep. Although these blue tools are pretty much crap, we still managed to remove the hefty amount of material at a pretty good speed. I have to tell you, this is so satisfying, and at no time at all we're left with a clean part, making us look like we already know what the hell we're doing. Nothing could be further from the truth, but let's continue because this is where it gets tough. So let's take a minute and ponder what we're going to do next. We're going to take a piece of stock aluminum tube and reduce the circumference of the bottom portion so that it will fit in the base piece we just modified. Then, using the rotational properties of the top slide, we're going to shape the rest of the cylinder at an angle, kind of like a, a shot glass. Then, we'll do the same to the inside. Lastly, we'll cut the shape of a crown and if it all goes well, we'll have a perfect little ornament for our gas tank. But most important, we'll have gotten some practice on this phenomenal tool, the lathe. Here is our stock, right next to our cheapo cutters. We decided to get creative, and a little lazy, may I add, and use the rotation to cut the portion of stock that we'll be using for the build, using a traditional saw. It ain't pretty, but it worked. <laughs> then, after measuring the inside diameter of the base and the outside of the stock, we worked out how much material we had to remove. Once we had all the necessary measurements, we started with the fun part, the cutting. Using our brace tool, we begin removing material. You'll notice that Polsky is leaving some space before the mark line. We'll clean that up in the final pass. 
It is easy to remove some extra material, but once you go too far, well, then you have gone too far. We keep removing stock, just about half a millimeter per pass. And once we're close to the target size, we start measuring to make sure we don't mess it up. A quick test reveals that it fits just fine and we're now ready to go to the next step, the outside tapering. Now, remember to click on the bell to get the notification of when the next episode will be out because that's when we'll continue this project. We will work the cutter at an angle for the outside and inside tapering. Then we'll draw the crown design and work it with a grinder and a file to reveal the final product. Well, our clock is running out and I'm very satisfied with what we did in this episode until now, but what do you think? Let me know by visiting my Facebook page called Roma Custom Bike ENG or by commenting right here on YouTube. I'd like to remind you that along with subscribing to the channel, you can also visit our site www.romacustombike.com to find the accessories we've been producing and our t-shirts. I'm Custom Jazz for Roma Custom Bike and I'll see you next time.